Z on the defensive side. Beecroft loves those Seattle Seahawks, but young Kiv, another player in the tournament, grabbed him first, so he goes Cincinnati Bengals because of his love of Joe Mixon. That ball actually bouncing out of bounds. Joe Mixon loves him right back. We'll talk more about that. A lot of people love this guy. Dwayne Wood, a.k.a. Clef the God. Great ladder record, obviously, 84 and 10. Gunning for that first belt. He's been close. Here are the abilities for him. So this is Madden 20. Brand new to Madden is these abilities. First, I'm going to start with this Michael Vick. He's got this escape artist, hot route master identifier, agile extender. That escape artist is going to be huge. Look for him to really get busy with his legs. With these wide receivers coming up, he's going to have this Tory Holt. He's going to have this John Ross. These abilities to help the route running and catching and in traffic. It's going to be huge for him. And on defense, all he has is that Ed Reese secure tackler, which is still huge. He's going to be able to wrap up. And on offense, he's going to be running that West Coast bump and on defense, the Miami Dolphins. Up against 19-year-old Daniel Mycroft, who yesterday survived Madden Challenge champion Noah 10 to three to win 10 grand. So up and up he comes in the community. Let's check out his abilities. What do you like, Skim? Well, this Aaron Rodgers, not only does he have these abilities, escape artist, fearless identifier, the reason why he chooses them is because he has one of the fastest releases in the game. So that Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to get that ball out of his hand quick. He's got this John Roth with a slot apprentice to run four additional routes. The big thing you need to pay attention to is this center. He's going to be able to help him by a lot of time in that Frank Clark. That Frank Clark's got to be big for him today on defense. And with his playbooks, he's going to be running the New England Patriots. It's very unique. It's something special. He does. And then on defense, the Green Bay Packers. All right, let's Madden. And you look at the countenance of young Daniel Mycroft. He looks like British royalty, doesn't he? But he can go from British royalty to Lil Wayne in about a second and a half. I mean, this guy can uh, <laughs> absolutely get excited. We saw that a couple times yesterday. Clef has been pretty chill. And we mentioned even though he loves those Tampa Bay Bucks, loyalty is out the window. You build the perfect roster. You don't have time to mess around with loyalty. He's got the defense set. And the first run is CJ2K. Chris Johnson trying to escape gets just one yard. You know, very safe call in the first play game from D. Croft. Maybe it's nerves. Maybe he saw something he liked. He likes to air the ball out. He will mix in the run. He has a running back. However, he really loves to the, the pass the ball out of this formation for the majority of the game. Chris Johnson's been such a great card to play in Madden this year. CJ2K is from Orlando, just like EA Sports. And Tyreek Hill on the field here. He's slot to the left and in motion now. Both these guys will look to put it in the air today. And sure enough, here's Aaron Rodgers trying to step into one. He'll take off. He'll get the first down. He'll slide past the 40-yard line. Wow, that's next level pocket by Decroft. Clef tried to send the hounds at him and get some pressure. We haven't seen a lot of people try to blitz Decroft early. Clef comes out. Decroft steps up and uses that escape artist ability with Aaron Rodgers to pick up about 12 to 14 yards. Decroft, the big Seahawks fan. Weird that he's got Aaron Rodgers as his QB, but it's been working for him all tournament. Again, he'll tuck it, he'll slide, and a second and short coming up. You guys just at home, watch this center with that star around it. He's going to make his whole entire offensive line better. They're going to be able to hold blocks a lot better when people are blocked. However, if the heat comes in and you can't block it, too bad. But if they do, if they block someone, they're going to be able to hold it for a long period of time. He Croft undefeated run in the last chance qualifying event. He beat four club champions and then Jay Wall, a great player, twice along the way. This one ladled out. Mostert's got it. And we need to point this out. Clef the God actually knows Mostert pretty well. He's best friends with Raheem Mostert's brother. They grew up together, New Smyrna Beach High School. So isn't that something? Clef the God has got to defend Mostert today, even though Mostert is one of his guys in real life. That's, that's awesome. And look at him. He's disguising a blitz every time. Look how many people are lined up at the line of scrim for the defensive side. He's showing blitz every time. But watch, sometimes those slot corners drop back, and sometimes they come. Towards the end zone, got his man, Tyreek Hill! What a play. I'm telling you, when you go against this formation of Decroft, you don't get a lot of reps versus it. And that was just a simple corner route, and there was a broken coverage over the top. Great read by Decroft. What a drive by Decroft to start this game.
Clef has a history of slow starts in this tournament, right? And sure enough, here he is, down 7-0, almost right away. Yes, that's Kellen Winslow bringing it back. Talk more about that in a bit. But first, our Snickers replay of the touchdown going 26 yards. As you see, just a broken coverage on the right side. There was no zone over there. Clef with his user tried to make up ground, but couldn't get there in time. Easy read for Decroft. And you see the emotion. This is the getting to the finals. This is such a big game. Oh, Decroft yesterday tweeted out the word finish. Just one word, finish, right? Meaning I I'm so close. I just got to keep on going here. But Clef the God, I think very similarly, he tweeted out yesterday, we ain't done yet. And he is a guy that, let's face it, Skimbo, started out one and two in group play. To be down like that and come back and get this close already, that's pretty big. But, you know, I've always said this, and people don't like it. I, you, and, and it's true in sports with the, you know, NCAA March Madness. When it's single elimination, some people just fold. And when Clef got out of groups and went to that single elimination, he rises. He rises to the occasion. He barely got out of groups, but you knew once he got single limbs, he was going to make a run like this. Now, he has revved the motor now, and he's got Michael Vick loaded with abilities here. Agile extender, escape artist, hot route master, identifier, so... That's one of the best Madden players ever, and he has piled high with treats here. Number one pick of the 2001 draft, Michael Vick. And the lefty looking. With time, flings it. Kellen Winslow has been a big player for a lot of guys in this tournament. Move those chains. If you're at home, really pay attention to these route combinations Clef has, has going if he shows it. He's using that hot route master by Vic. That means he can put any wide receiver tight end on any route on the field. He's looking for flood concepts along with bomb posts. Jalen Samuels, his running back, seldom oh, ever oh needs God. to use him. You can always run with Vic, although that time D. Croft was ready. He needs to be careful. This is Madden 20. And if you've played Madden 20, you know if you take off with your quarterback and you get beyond that line of scrimmage, there's a high chance you can fumble. If you want some advice, play on conservative if you're tired of your quarterback fumbling. Decroft trying to be the latest teenager to make it into the final round. There's been a real run of that in Madden play over the last several tournaments. Michael Vick back for 24-year-old Clef the God. And he'll just fire it out of bounds, third and nine. That Decroft defense, all tournament Skimbo has been great. Well, he's running this match coverage, and that's just these, his corners are in zone, but if someone runs across their face and there's no responsibility, they're just going to man up. But watch this DT, Frank Clark, with that star on him. Just take a look at what he does on this play. He's going to be fighting like crazy with that power specialist to get after Michael Vick. Decroft added to him just for this tournament, but Vic finds the seam. He'll take off and get that first down and more. That's a nifty little run for Clef the God. It's, it's great way to step up in the pocket, escape with that escape artist, and get a bunch of yards. That's the benefit of using Vic over to Aaron Rodgers. That Vic has 99 speed, while that Aaron Rodgers is not even close to that. Late first quarter, and again a reminder yesterday, there wasn't a single player that took the field here. Eight players total that scored more than one touchdown. In fact, four games yesterday, Skim, we saw six touchdowns in four games. The average score yesterday and a very defensive-themed Madden right now was 12-7. to seven. Looking for seven here. Number seven, Michael Vick. Oh Firing, God. that Hit is going to be, oh, right on that sideline. How are they calling it is the question. Incomplete. Incomplete. It's been the knock on Clef. He has good drives, but when he gets in the red zone, he forces. He wants, you know, it's, it's our big, but you cannot force a pick. He's done this in numerous games. When you get down here, he has to play smarter. Yeah, Clef has turned it over five times in this tournament already. And again, not only did he start one and two, one of those losses was 31 to three. That to Noah, the guy that knocked him out in the finals of a tournament played just a few months ago. From the 19, Michael Vick in trouble. And taking off and finding some room, getting close to that first down make. Good stick work there from Clef. 
Yeah, but he might have had a touchdown in that corner on the left rolling out. I believe if this is not a single elimination, go to the finals, and this was just a regular game playing with your boys, he would have made that throw in the corner of the end zone. But that's what I'm talking about. Now he's trying to play safe and just taking what's there, and this is a manageable third and two. Clef's got a great offensive mind. He played at Fullerton College in California. Former Tampa Bay quarterback Steve DeBerg way back in the day came out of there. DeBerg a quarterback for the Bucks in the mid-80s. Not quite as good as the guy they got coming in. Vic looking. Gets the block. Takes off. First down. And goal to go. Cool. And you can see Michael Vick is, in, is red. So he's going to take his sweet time calling a play. But the big thing about both these players' drive is how well they've stepped up in and out of the pocket. And Michael Vick has been the best player for him. And then for Decroft, obviously, it's been Aaron Rodgers. Decroft has had that retina burning defense all tournament, but he can't stop Kellen Winslow on the plunge using the tight end for the touchdown. You know, outside one bad read by Clef, you know, he shook it off. It, you know, he just kept driving. You know, a lot of people like Decroft probably feels like he got a little unlucky, but you have to lock back in. You can't let one drop pick get to you. You know, there's numerous downs, and Clef took advantage of that, and he scored seven on that drive. And Skimbo, you called it. Two guys that are very good with the stick, two guys that know how to run an offense. I mean, we talked about the average game yesterday being 12 to 7. We're on pace to see 28 28 and go on OT right now. Yeah, and this Madden's so different with this two clock feature. And old Madden's, this would probably be only about the two minute, 230 mark, but there's a continuous two clock after plays. So these games will go by very quick. Patriots offensive playbook for D. Croft, something that my partner Michael Skimbo knows very well. Helping him to three belts. Rodgers will just fire out of bounds. And I guess with that Patriots look, a lot of gun you trips, right? That's not a real popular thing in the meta right now. But Decroft likes it, and he, he does it very well. The meta and competitive man for the last four to five years have been what Clef's running, that shotgun bunch. And the reason why I believe Decroft's making such a great run is everything's just so unique. The formation, the motions, the route combos. You're just, you just don't see it every day. Late first quarter and Rodgers back. Fans it out to Tyreek Hill with a first down. This is what I'm talking about. He's motioning people in that brings these corners in and leaving out routes, corner routes just wide open. So well prepared is Decroft too. You know, he ended his interview with us at 4 Pacific time yesterday and was prepping for Clef the God at 4.03. Pausing only to tweet that one time about how he's got to finish if he wins this game he's, he's got a touchdown or me oh. no it's taken away oh. by sweet That's feet like denzel oh. ward as plus the god jumps in on him he had it right if you can see he's Uh, so back now goes Decroft on defense in a 7-7 tie underway in the second quarter. And Vic getting harassed. Going backwards and firing out of bounds. Michael Vick, and we'll get back to Michael Skimbo momentarily. Here is the guy that'll try to get Clef the God downfield and into a final. It's funny seeing Michael Vick as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, isn't it? Tampa Bay hasn't always had the best QB. They got a great one coming in. That ball knocked away. And there's Decroft making some noise again. If you go way back, 76, 77, when Tampa Bay was first a franchise in those creamsicle colored uniforms with Buccaneer Bruce on the helmet. You know, they started their existence 0 26. They were shut out 11 times. They did not have a quarterback. But here is Michael Vick running this offense for Clef the God. 
Their first six home games in 77, they had three points total to those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Amazing. Had a quarterback named Randy Hedberg who had no touchdowns and 10 picks. 25 for 90. Timeout taken here. We're working through some technical issues to get three-time belt winner Michael Skimbo back with us. My name's Josh Lewin. Thanks very much for joining us. And what a tournament we've had. Again, a very defensive-themed tournament so far. About to award the 18th belt ever in Madden play. And my boy Skimbo's got three of them. Won three in a six-event period at one point, basically in a year and a half. So on a third down and ten, and remember Clef is a guy who's built to throw. And he will throw a dart to Torrey Holt to move the chains. That's been a big player for a lot of people in this tournament, specifically for Clef. 24 catches for Torrey Holt in four games of group play coming in. And the seven-time Pro Bowler who retired with the tenth most receiving yards in NFL history. That's a key card to have now. That's a big first down pickup. Still 4.15 to go in this second quarter. Our next game, you're going to be watching a Pavin and Joke. That's a rematch of a game that was played just about a week ago that went right down to the wire. Pocket collapsing and Michael Vick is down. There's that Frank Clark. Skimbo was talking about him. By the way, we're going to have a two-time at belt winner join us in just a moment. Sirius Mo will jump in and pick up some of the color commentary for us. But that Frank Clark card being used by essentially half the field of 16 as this tournament began. And it seems like every single player that's used that Frank Clark, some dividends have been paid off. And down goes Vic again. There's Clark one more time. And Mo, we're, we're talking about Clark. We're talking about defense. Decroft knows how to use that defensive stick. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And that Frank Clark is so good, man. He's getting to that quarterback. And he's more, more than anything, he's collapsing that pocket. It's making it where he can't roll out with that Michael Vick. So he's having to stay stationary, and it's, it's causing a bunch of trouble. And you see it right oh. here again. Fourth and forever. And, you know, you talk about the, the adjustment that was made coming out of the LCQs. Frank Clark was not on Decroft's team. But he picked him up almost immediately. Picked up Ed Reed as well. That's pretty good. What a tremendous addition here as we stay tied up for now. Tyree Kill lassoed around the 30-yard line. So, Mo, since you're just kind of jumping on now, what have you seen from your seat? I mean, Decroft looks very cool, very comfortable right now. Yeah, I think they I think they both had really great offensive drives that first drive, but Decroft looks a really, really locked in on defense. You know, I, I could see that being some trouble for Clef going forward. Once again, takes off with Aaron Rodgers. And it's weird to think that with Chris Johnson and Raheem Mostert in the backfield, there's still a lot of pass, pass, pass with Aaron Rodgers. Is that the right thing to be doing here? Yeah, I think that's how he's built his team. Um, all year long, he's used that, that halfback split out at tight end. There's a little package you can do to sneak him in there. So I think he just likes the extra speed to have at tight end. You know, it, they're almost like decoys, you know, and, and it gives him the, the flexibility to run the ball if he absolutely has to. Two-minute warning in this first half. Again, coming up next, it'll be Pavin and Joke. Joke beat Drini yesterday 12-7. to Joke's going to run it all day long. In this tournament, no passes, 99 runs for Joke. Pavin, meantime, will be flinging it all around. In this one, it's exactly what we thought. Even Steven, two great young players here. And Rodgers will swerve and fling it out of bounds, third and fourth. And that was a great lurk there by Clef. You know, he took his user, and it looked like his player was going to defend the streak, but he realized it wasn't going to, and he just ran back there himself. And I think Decroft wanted to throw the streak so bad, he almost forgot about everybody else on the field. I see that Denzel Ward being brought right up here. here. Yeah, I got that. Unleash the Hounds look right now, doesn't he? And Clef the God, who's actually like an he's offensive mind first. Yeah, he's got Ed Reed dropping back now, too. Son of an offensive coordinator, but trying to play defense here. They go underneath. Boy, and a, a catch that had to be scraped right off the ground there, but they get it done to move the chains. 
Yeah, I didn't love that the way that looked at all coming out, out of Aaron Rodgers' hand. It actually looked like Clef was going to have enough time to make a play right there. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers has that great release, and I think that saved him right there. Tyree Kill and Kellen Winslow have traded touchdowns in this one. Josh Lewin, Sirius Mo, along with you, efforting to get Michael Skimbo back as well. Rodgers, and again, just that hoisted out of bounds thing because the pressure was coming in from Clef. You know, I love the way Clef is adjusting on defense. Um, you know, that, like I said, that first drive out of Decroft, it was flawless. I don't think he threw an incomplete pass. Now you're seeing him force Decroft to throw the ball away a few times, kind of get repetitive on offense, and that's working to Clef's advantage. You take a shot downfield, go over the top. Going to try. Uh, that's what he's doing. Got a shot at it. He's in the end zone, but he can't hang on. John Ross. And we've heard wow. Skimbo. Almost. Skimbo preached all week. You know, he would really like to see Decroft with some more abilities on his receivers. And that right there cost him. That was seven points if he has that streak specialist. He's got the cross specialist on Ross, but nothing Let's else. Go. That one tipped. That one oh. It should have been picked. And Josh, I'm going to tell you right now, that would have been for six if he would have got his hands on that ball. That's Denzel Ward, 99 oh. speed. Nobody on the offense was going to catch him, and I cannot believe he dropped that. Oh. Now, both these guys have talked a lot already. <laughs> we anticipated that. And again, because we're all sheltered at home, I mean, they're an audience of one. They're talking to themselves. This ball punted into the end zone. So here we go, 90 seconds left in the half. How are you firing this up, Mo? If you were the man on offense now, what are you looking at? You got to have one good play. If you have one good play, almost guarantees you're going to have the, the last drive of the half. But right there, we just seen a huge, crucial mis mental mistake by Decroft. He actually had six mile an hour wind going with him. So he would have been able to make that field goal. I, I can't believe he didn't elect to kick the field goal. Bobby just trying to pin him at the one, but instead it went wobbling into the end zone. And another, oh, the ball came loose that time with Shaq Griffin coming in. Yeah, and, and Clef is putting his tight end on this check and release route, and it seems like he's not able to get him off the, off the double team. You know, when your tight end's getting double teamed, it's really hard for him to release. And it looks like if he is able to release, he's going to have some big yardage, but he's just not able to, and that's why you've seen that sack fumble right there. Luckily for Clef, he maintained possession. Oh, Decroft couldn't punt it inside the 10, but with that last play, it is now back at the 10 on a second and 20. Semi-final action here. Madden Bowl. And again, you've got Pavin and Joke coming up next. Vic is back. And escapes. Boy, bumped into his own man, Ooh. trading paint and going upfield. Oh, and he's got that stick working to get near the first down. I don't like the timeout. I don't like the timeout at all. I, I, he had a he had a really good opportunity right there where he was going to force Decroft to not use a timeout. I, I think it's going to be way too hard to get points in this position. I think he should have just taken it to half, get the ball back at half. You're still in control of the game. I don't love this timeout at all. Uh, more bad can, can, than good can happen here. There's already been a pick in this first half. Teams trading touchdowns early. Tyree Kill for Decroft, Kellen Winslow for Clef the God. Wide open year, said Clef right at the top of this tournament. Expect the unexpected. There's no clear favorite. In fact, there's no one undefeated in this tournament. Whoever wins this thing is going to have at least one loss. In fact, Clef already has two. And remarkably made it out of group play, going one and two. He needed Scheman to go 0-3, and, and that's exactly what happened. And, you know, that, that's the beautiful thing about group stage. It's kind of like a second life. You can afford to play a bad game. I, I think Clef's going to take a shot right here. Now he's going to take a sack is what he's going to take right here. The twin 55s, Clark and Baker, both making noise. So now fourth and nine. You know, that's the fifth sack already for Decroft and only the first half. You know, these are only five-minute quarter games. So to have five sacks in the first half, this game, your defensive game plan is going exactly how you want it to. Decroft had an eight-sack game a couple days ago. Sometimes Clef does have a tough time protecting, even though he's got that agile Michael Vick. Hill blasted on the sidelines. And Decroft's a really safe player. I don't expect him to even pass the ball here. I would expect to see a run or maybe even a kneel, and we're just going to take this thing to half. 
Good call there, CJ2K. He'll get mashed from behind by Merton Hanks. And they'll let that clock run and run and run right to halftime. 7-7 tie. And Mo, just like we said, defense is kind of carrying everybody in this tournament. No surprise that it's 7-7 here. Yeah, but after those first two drives, it looked like we were going to see fireworks in this game. But these guys have kind of settled in on defense, making some adjustments. And for Decroft, Frank Clark is going nuts. Now, speaking of going nuts, both these guys, when they're wired for sound, they can bring it a little bit. A 7-7 score at half. But if you want to hear what they sound like in the comfort of their own rooms, let's audible at home. Hey! Oh, my God! Pick the ball! D, baby! Come on, Denzel! That's why you there, 99, baby! Pick it! Oh, my God! Pick the ball! Pick! Let's go! Oh! <laughs> Clef the God doesn't have a belt yet, Sirius Mo, but look at this win percentage. It's the best. He's basically four out of five in the win column. He's on top. Yeah, and that honestly, seeing that win percentage doesn't tr surprise me at all. You know, he's one of the best players every year, and, you know, he kind of has that fear factor. And what I mean when I say that is you don't want to play this guy. You know what I mean? This guy puts in a lot of reps. He plays probably more games online than anybody, and, you know, he's an extremely emotional player. He just, he strikes a little bit of fear in his opponents. So seeing that win percentage doesn't surprise me at all. The only thing that would surprise me is him not having that belt yet. Oh, well, he talked about Joke not having one yet. He's been added a lot longer than Clef. Clef is kind of a rising star here and everybody in the community seems to think it's just a matter of time. Is this his time today? He is out of time here with Michael Vick. Again, D. Croft with the defense. Yeah, and we're seeing that check and release route and it's wide open. There's nobody in the middle of the field so that, that Kelly Winslow, if he's able to get off that block, he's going to have a wide open streak up the field, but he's just not able to. And I feel like Clef's kind of getting in a habit of staring him down. And, you know, it's making him miss some reads. And I think he's depending on that check and release route just a little bit too much. Only one big play in his win yesterday. He went deep and scored. He's going to fan this one out to Kellen Winslow to get some of those yards back. He had that 70-yard bomb to John Ross yesterday. We got to shout out John Ross, former member of Snoop Dogg's All-Star Pee Wee League. And, of course, Snoop is such a friend of Madden. Plays it so often. He's in a lot of work with us. And I guess the question is, can Clef get John Ross or Cribs or Torrey Holt? Can he get anybody free downfield? As strange as it sounds, that Kellen Winslow is probably the second-worst offensive player on the team behind that Jalen Samuels. But I think he's going to have to be the key to this game. That's who he's going to have to be getting open. No one open yet. And Vic left it on the carpet. Clark picks it up. Frank the tank. He's going to the crib. And that Frank Clark, he's not going to stop this game. As you can see, he's just going nuts. Another sack for him. And this time he goes ahead and picks it up for six. Sack number seven. And seven points total here. Decroft, we mentioned it, Mo. He didn't have Frank Clark in that LCQ round. He kind of looked around, sniffed around, and said, you know what? I, I got to have this guy. And he has been the man of the match. Go back to that last play. What, what do you see? I just see this. First of all, that's great stick work. By, uh, he could have easily blitzed with Shazier with his user and said he elected just wait. You know, he didn't want to let... Mike Vick have some space across the line of scrimmage. Just waited for the defense to get in there. He gets a sack. Luckily for him, he also gets the fumble. And Frank Clark, nobody in front of him. Just a walk-in touchdown. You'd never know that Decroft is the mild-mannered son of an expatriated Englishman when you watch those replays. He's the most polite kid you'd ever want to talk to. 23 hours and 30 minutes out of the day. But these 30 minutes of Madden, he is a tiger. Vic underneath. There's Torrey Holt for Clef. And some good yardage there. And I like, I like to see Clef send that tight end out instead of leaving him in the block on that check and release. I think you got to mix it up. I think you, if you put him on that flat route, you force D, D. Croft to respect him. You're going to open up some of your wide receivers that, that are able to make bigger plays down the field. 
Now, i got to bring this up, Mo. There was a game not too long ago where Decroft seemed to be very much under control. He was up 14 and nothing against Rage. All of a sudden, there he was losing 24-21. Has he learned from that? He doesn't seem like the kind of guy that's going to let this one get away from him right now. I think absolutely he's learned from that. And, you know, luckily for him, it didn't really cost him anything in the tournament. He was still the one seed in his group. So he probably didn't think about it too much, honestly. I think the biggest takeaway from that game is he went back and he was able to lab against that defense that, that Rage was running. And, you know, we've seen other opponents try to mimic that defense that Rage used against him, and it just hasn't worked out for them. That was a crazy game. Decroft had a 99-yard touchdown to Marquise Brown. Winslow again being used to tote it instead of catch it. And that's not been a bad play, actually, for Clef. Yeah, and, you know, the, the one problem with this drive is after Clef took that fumble for six, he fumbles for six, his guys are, have still been tired, so he hasn't been able to get them back to fully energized, and that's why we're seeing him run the ball with that Kellen Winslow rather than just drop back and pass every play. And again, you know, part of the chess match with Matt, you've got a roster to build here, you've got abilities to either stick on the guys or not, and it's your own stick work. And I don't know how you feel about it, Mo, which of those three is the most important element, but these guys blend all of those things so well. As Vic gets close to a first down, I know it's an unfair question, but if you only had one of those, great roster, great abilities, or great stick work, which one of those are you taking? Uh, you know, for me, I'm, I've always had great stick work. I haven't been able to build a very good roster. My scheme's never been the best. So maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think stick work normally prevails, prevails in the end. But for these guys, it's definitely all about the scheme. Well, right there, there was scheme and stick on defense for Decroft. Here's a huge third and one coming up for Clef. Yeah, and you know, we've seen that fullback dive work for him, so I don't, I don't mind the call at all. But, you know, this, this is where it gets tough. You, you're, you have to convert right here, or you may have to kick a field goal. Just don't take a sack, right? Because you need at least those three points. And I don't like this route combination. He's sending everybody down the field. Maybe Kellen Winslow on this flat route will get open, but I, I do not. See, he's sending everybody out. Four, four. Vic takes off. Did they get the Hold first the down or not? He's right on the stripe. It's fourth and inches. This is scary. You know, Clef doesn't want to go to that fullback dive and see it get blown up again. So we're going to see a pass right here on fourth and inches, as crazy as that sounds. I know in the NFL a lot, we'll see a goal line package right here, two tight ends, three tight ends. But we're going to see him drop back and pass. You don't think about taking the points and trusting your defense. You like going for it? Oh, my God! Oh, he threaded the needle! Ooh. You got to like it now. Torrey Holt barely able to grab it. And I actually like Decroft's decision to go with a swat right there. It looked like Shazier was just a little bit too far behind it. Oh, so close. So close to just taking complete control of this game. Remember, Clef, the son of an offensive coordinator. Great offensive mind. He's got Michael Vick stepping out of it. And Michael Vick will slide past the 10-yard line. That's a heck of a way to get through three quarters. You got Clef on the move against Decroft. The winner of this game has a spot in the final. We got a big fourth quarter coming up. 14-7 now. We'll step aside for our viewers on ESPN2. When we come back, the last five minutes with Clef and Decroft. And for those of you that are still with us on Twitch and YouTube, time for the fourth quarter presented by Creamy Snickers. You're not smooth when you're hungry. Oh, no, no, don't pressure me. This party's garbage. That bad, huh? It is that bad. It's like a bag of zero. Try this Creamy Snickers. You can use a little smoothness. Is that one of the zeros? Get smooth with the fresh ground nut butters and Creamy Snickers. Uh, for those of you watching us on Twitch, make sure your EA account is linked to your Twitch account for a chance at a 95 overall Gronk. And if you tune in for an hour today of the Madden Bowl, you'll get a random 98-99 overall player from the top five of the NFL Draft class of 2020.
Semi-final action, Decroft, 19 years old, trying to move on against Clef the God, who is on the move right now. Josh Lewin, two-time belt winner, Sirius Mo with us, hoping to get Michael Skimbo back as well. So Clef has found a little bit here, Mo. He's taken it down to the eight-yard line. You're in this close. What kind of things are you calling? I think on second down, we're probably going to see him go with the fullback dive, and if it gets some positive yards, I wouldn't be surprised to see actual no huddle, you know, trying to just squeeze it in. Uh, but if you get in a passing situation, we're probably going to see a mesh post concept with the running back out on a wheel route. But I, I, he wants to get yards right here on this fullback dive. Well, trying it with Kellen Winslow, he needed only inches. He didn't get him. Third down coming up. We're going to see another fullback dive. That was Daniil Hunter that shot the gap last time. That Decroft defense has been one of the stories of this tournament. And here we are in the fourth quarter of our first semifinal. Winslow with a push. Are they going to give him those yards or those inches? I think and the so. answer is yes. But the problem was, you know, that wasn't a very good run, though. You just barely got the inch, so you're kind of afraid to run it again. You're going to have to drop back and pass. This is where it gets really scary. This is where a lot of players that run this gun bunch formation make a lot of mistakes. We talked about the football background for Cliff the God. Dwayne Wood played at Benedictine College and Fullerton College before getting a hurt. This is how he competes now. He's a Madden professional. Was an assistant coach at his high school. Now he's doing this full time. And with time, Michael Vick. Buying time and getting it to the five. That was such a great play there by Clef. It honestly probably should have been a uh, touchdown, but Kellen Winslow just misses the block on the cornerback. But Clef buying so much time with that Michael Vick. I thought for sure he was going to have to throw the ball away. Ends up getting four yards. Probably should have been a touchdown. You know, you got to love that from Clef. That, that four yards is so much, so big. It makes it so much easier to get seven uh, and I'm, he's still going to have to drop back and pass the ball. That's the only scary part. The field has shrunk so small. Pass game has been in airplane mode all day for Clef. What does he have here? He's got nothing. He's thrown down yet again. And, you know, that Jalen Samuels just isn't a good enough running back to get open on that wheel route. He's not going to beat that man coverage. So Clef's going to have to make have to make a hot read to Josh Cribbs or John Ross or Torrey Holt. You know, that, that you can almost count out the tight end and running back on the, uh, right here. Yeah, Clef's a baller on a budget when it comes to running backs and tight ends. He's got to get these wide receivers involved. That's Ross to the right, Cribbs to the left. With free a play. Flat down. Free play. Yeah, but it's but it's knocked oh, down. Get the free play. Yeah, you no, wanted more than that CPU on a free play. Sides. I did not touch that guy. That is literally a CPU offsides that the game made me go offsides on. I want that review. I literally did not touch that. Do you hear D Croft there? Yeah, I, 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 he doesn't have much of a fighting argument here. I mean, your guy's offsides. Clef would have never just thrown that ball. Your guy's offsides a free play. Everybody knows that. Everybody's going to take advantage of that. So, you know, he's going to argue, but I wouldn't be. We're going to see a, a third and four from the four yard line. I never touched him. League Ops monitoring here through video conferencing. So even though we're all sheltered at home, there is a conversation going on now to determine if. D. Croft really does have an argument to advance. Well, you know, it's still, it's at, at best okay. for D. Croft, it's been going to be fourth and goal from the eight. You know, I, I don't really like these stoppages. Okay, so you know, play. I mean, we're in the fourth quarter with three minutes left, up by seven. You know, you if the game's too tight for us to be pausing the game, I think we got to play on here. Go back to D. Croft against Young Kiv in a memorable game from several months ago. There was a, a reset. And Decroft kind of stumbled out of it. That game ended up going overtime. It's a short break this time. And it is a third and goal for now at the four-yard line. First of our two semifinals, Madden Bowl. And thanks again for jumping in and joining us here. Oh Michael Vick God, to the end zone. The oh, almost hey. picked. That would have been ball game. Cleft needed to wait just another second. That's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, I actually love the play call. Did. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to it. And again, you don't take the points and trust your D, right? You're, you're going for the tie here. You're okay with that? 
You know, I, 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 would, I, don't, I wouldn't mind kicking the field goal here just because if, even if you don't get it, you have your opponent trapped down at the four-yard line. But, you know, the Clef feels like he's not comfortable giving the ball back, so he's got to go get seven here. And I don't, I don't mind the call either way. Here we go, Michael Vick. Let's go! Oh, to the oh, end oh, 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 no. that. Oh, and that's as unlucky as, and Madden as you can get. That was a wide open pass. Clef is beside himself right now. Boy, that ball just went whistling right towards the hands of a guy standing in the back of the end zone. The next thing you know, it's ball turned over on downs. Now, 2.49 to go, three timeouts left in the two-minute warning. You make a stop here, I think Clef is still in pretty good shape. Mostert trying to turn the corner. And again, Mostert, a guy that Clef actually knows very well. They went to the same high school, good buds. But Raheem Mostert is running it for Decroft. That was the guy that returned to kick for Decroft to get him this far. And I don't love the timeout there by Clef. If Decroft played last for longer than five seconds, that timeout was, there was no point in calling it. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Clef send seven people here right here. Rodgers setting his feet. Looking for a 93-yard bomb. Marquise Brown, Hollywood, touchdown! Ah! I'll take him down. They are now kid. Amazing. He had a 99-yarder to they Hollywood earlier in this tournament and they lost that game. Here's 93 yards, and that could be the dagger. Yeah, it looked like Clef tried to do a little bit too much right there on defense. Uh, and, you know, you can't blame him. The game's winding down. There's only only three minutes left, so it is what it is. Just a great play there by Decroft. The defense has carried him, but here's some offense, Mo. Yeah, he sent a little bit of pressure, but it wasn't going to get there. He only sent four guys. Decroft had all day. He left seven in, max protect, and the streak just wide open. No, no coverage there at all. Hooray for Hollywood, 21-7 game. And there's so much speed on that team for Decroft. Guys that ran at sub 4 3 40s at the NFL Combine all over his roster. Vic to the sidelines here for Torrey Holt. I mean, you got Chris Johnson as one of your running backs. You've got Ross and Hill and Brown at receiver. So it's a good team. It's a fast team for Decroft. Fast on defense, too. And again, that's been part of why he's been able to go up the way he's gone up today. Yeah, and you know, the speed kills. Everybody knows that, especially in Madden. And if Clef wants to have any fighting chance in this game, he's going to have to try to score before this two-minute warning. You know, it's funny, Mo. I go back to a, a cast that you were on not too long ago, the club championship game for the Seahawks. Decroft said he heard you say out loud that he needed to be more aggressive. There's an aggressive throw and a good catch right there on the sidelines. But how aggressive was Decroft moments ago, airing it out? from the shadow of his end zone, 93 yards. It's about as aggressive as you're going to get. Oh, he had the corner route. Oh, he did. And Winslow cutting inside to the two-minute warning now. It's a second and two coming up. Clef's going to have to score quick. He only one. has two timeouts. Yeah, an onside kicks, by the way, not that recoverable. I mean, we're talking about a 1% chance in Madden this year. Very important to keep some timeouts and obviously punch it in the end zone ASAP. Only one touchdown so far for Clef, and once again, he is dragged down. We're getting close to 10 sacks here for Decroft. Yeah, and it's not looking good for Clef. The time just keeps ticking. He's going to have to score on this play probably to have any real chance in this game. Remember, Decroft had to win the last chance qualifier just to be here. He's 118 away from a title game. And Holt forced out of bounds. I mean, Mo, with Decroft, we're talking about a guy who's 50th, 5-0 in this year's standings. Not only does he have a seat at the table, I mean, he could be right on in the finals here in short order. 
Yeah, Decroft has been the most impressive player so far. He, he's dominated on both sides of the ball throughout this entire tournament. All right, talk about last chances. This is kind of it for Clef the guy. Got to score very quickly now. Again, next up, Pavin against Joke. Hey, let's go! Vic in trouble. There's sack number 10. You go double digits, half of those literally to number 55. Double nickels, Frank Clark. And another one. Just keep hunting them down. Yeah, and that, it's going to be really tough for Clef. He only has 30 seconds, and he's got to get an onside kick, score two touchdowns. And the story of the game has been this defensive line for Decroft just getting in the backfield every single play. Yeah, sacks are 11 to nothing in favor of Decroft. Oh, oh. Do we hear 12? Michael Vick is down. And we are down to 30 seconds left. Very exciting times, obviously, for Decroft as we continue to tout the young guns in Madden. Five of the last six tournaments, there has been a teenager in a final game. And it sure looks like we're going to add to that. 19-year-old Daniel Mycroft. If he makes this stop, he wins. All day, Michael Vick on the run towards the end zone. Toe tap. Touchdown. He's not dead yet. Cleft the God scores. We have one last chance at it. Problem is he has no timeout, so even if he's able to get this onside back, probably going to be one play for the game. And we haven't seen a recovery of an onside kick in Madden in tournament play. All it takes is one, though, right? I mean, this is it for Clef. Thumped on the ground. Laquan Treadwell locks it up for Decroft. And Decroft, who... Kept saying, just win the next one, win the next one, when he was winning a couple days ago. He'll get a next one. He is on to the finals in serious mode.